In this video, I'm teaching you how to set up Confluence Spaces for beginners. To follow along with this video, make sure you sign up and create your free account to Confluence using my link in the description bar down below. So a Confluence Space is where you put all of your project information inside. Now I know that might sound kind of confusing, so let me explain it in a more personal and a relatable way. One of my favorite foods that I love to treat myself out to is sushi. And it's also one of my favorite date night foods with my wife. Sushi is made of a seaweed wrapper on the outside and on the inside is all of your filling that contains your fish like tuna or salmon. And then you have avocado, rice, and a bunch of these other things. Think of Confluence like the sushi wrapper that contains all of your product documents inside of it. So the tuna fish, the avocado, and the rice. All of that filling, that's the equivalent of the different documents that are related to managing your project. So that could be meeting minutes, decision logs, risk register, Gantt charts, anything for your project. That's what you put inside of your Confluence space. Now let me show you how to set up your Confluence space and let's hop inside of my computer. So first things first, make sure you create your separate Confluence account using my link down below. After you've done that, you should see this homepage or something similar to it. Now to create your Confluence space, click on the Spaces drop-down menu on this top toolbar and then click on Create a Space. Now what you're going to see is that you have many templates that you can use to build out your space. As we go through each template, take a look at what changes inside this picture on the right. The pages that will be created here will change depending on the template that you use. So if we go to the team space template, we see that on the left hand side here, there will be pages created for your project plan, meeting notes, weekly status report. And on the home page, it's going to showcase your information about your team members, their contact information, and then any important pages about your team that you create yourself. If we click on the template for documentation, then we'll see that there are pages created for a product roadmap, error documentation. And on the home page, you'll have an overview for featured pages, popular labels, and recently updated pages. Now, if we choose a template, for example, for software project, then we'll have three pages created for product requirements, weekly meeting notes, and decision documentation. And the main space page itself will include information on the status, what's recently been updated, Jira issues, and the roadmap. So as you can see, each template is really meant to get you up and running based on the needs that you are trying to meet and fulfill. If your goal is only to share knowledge and best practices, then consider using the knowledge base template to create your space, because then it'll automatically create templates for your how-to guide, troubleshooting articles, and a good landing page for the about page, top topics, and contact information. If your goal, for example, is to use your space to plan out and organize your software project, then I'd recommend choosing the software project template. Please keep in mind that these automatically created pages on the left-hand side here, these are Confluence templates, which are designed to help you get started up and running. Now, of course, you can easily add more pages to your space, which we'll cover later on. So don't feel like you're constrained inside of a box based on the template that you choose. So feel free to play around with which template you wanna work with, but for the purposes of our video, let's choose the template for a software project. So I'll go ahead and I'll click on the blue next button. Here, let's name our space Software Application Project Space. And then for Jira instance, let's say that it's System Jira. And under the dropdown for Jira project, let's choose the project for e-commerce shopping app. And so for this space, it it usually likes to tie it to a Jira project. That way it can interface and connect directly between Confluence and Jira. So with that selected, you can see here on the right hand side that it creates a shortcut to your project's Jira board. It automatically creates these three template pages for your requirements, meeting notes, and decision documentation, and also this space page overview. With that, let's go ahead and let's click on the blue button to create our space. Now Confluence will take a few moments to set up our space, but once that's done, this will officially be the homepage of our project space. 
on the left hand side, you'll see the page templates that we talked about previously. So we have the template for product requirements. Then we have the next template for meeting notes. And then lastly, we have the template for decision documentation to track any decisions, options, action items. If we explore the other areas of this left hand panel, we also see a shortcut that's tied directly to our sprint board for our project. So if I click on this, it'll open up the e-commerce shopping app project and it'll connect directly to the sprint board. If we click back to the previous page, we're now taken back to our Confluence space itself. Pro tip from me, I recommend that you have one space that's tied to one project. In other words, each project that you're managing should have its own space for your team to store any relevant project documentation like retrospectives, meeting minutes, project plans, and requirements documentation. So when you click on this button here, it'll be taken to your homepage for your product space that you just created. And it will also show up right here for current space. You can see on the homepage that we have different sections for the project's latest status, Jira issues, items that have been recently updated, and an overview of the project's roadmap. Let's go ahead and let's start filling out these areas right in here. So for your project, I encourage you to fill out this information because it's a great way to present any high level information to anyone who sees your product space. Just keep in mind that you only want to include the relevant information that your team or other stakeholders needs to know. So to edit this space, I personally like to use keyboard shortcut keys. So for me, press the keyboard shortcut for E and it will go into enter mode. Let's collapse this panel so we'll have full screen to edit this. Underneath the status section, let's use the table macro to add a table right here. Let's delete the third column by pressing on the down arrow that's showing at the top right here and select delete column. Let's label the first cell as status and then the second cell as latest update. For status, let's type the forward slash key and then the word status. And that way it gives us access to the status macro. Let's say that our status is on track. So we'll go ahead and type that in and we'll choose the green color indicator to show that it actually is on track. We'll remove this bar so that way there's more room for the latest update comments. And let's go ahead and inside this cell, let's use a date macro to insert the date. So in our case today is, let's say that we're actually doing this on July 8. Actually, let's say that the latest status was done on July 1. Now that we've added in the date macro here, let's go ahead and let's add in the latest update. Our software team is in progress with adding user interface updates so that the user can start checking out items in the shopping cart. Now for Jira issues, this is where it gets really exciting because you can connect this directly to Jira. So let's add in the macro for issues in progress. And that is this macro right here. You'll see this pop up appear right away and you can decide how many issues you wanna show on the screen. For now, let's say that it's 10 issues and let's set the refresh interval to be every two hours. Now, of course, this will depend upon your preference, but just for the purposes of this video, let's say that this macro refreshes every two hours. And we'll go ahead and we'll click on save at the bottom of this panel. Make sure you click on save here, not this save, but this save button right here. And when you do that, your preview will show the two issues that are showing in progress for your current project. So let's go ahead and let's click save. And the Jira issues should pre-populate right here with the issues that are in progress. If you'd like to see what this actual page looks like, go ahead and click on the blue update blue button that's at the top right corner of your screen. And this is what your page will look like so far. We have the status and then the Jira issues. Let's go back and let's edit this. Let's uh, remove this column here, or actually let's remove this row. And yeah, everything looks good. Now onto the recently updated section, let's delete this table that's showing right here. So for this recently updated section, 
Let's go ahead and let's add in that macro for recently updated dashboard. Pro tip for me, to make this useful for yourself, instead of showing all these files that have these updates, only show the pages which have been updated for your specific space. Otherwise, this list will contain so many files that you may not necessarily want to see. So to make this change, choose the space that you're working in. So in our example, it's software application product project space. And then under include these content types only, let's type the word page. And when you go to the next tab, it will automatically filter and only show the pages that have recently been updated inside of your current space. If you want to see what that looks like inside of your actual homepage, click on update and you'll see what that now looks like. So we have the status and then we have the Jira issues and also the recently updated macro. Let's go back into edit mode. Let's clean this up a little bit. Let's delete this line under status and let's go under roadmap. Under the section for roadmap, let's delete this two column layout. And what we'll do is we'll insert the roadmap planner macro. So to do that, left click on these two columns and choose the recycled button to remove it. To insert the roadmap macro, just type in forward slash followed by road and you can choose the roadmap planner. For simplicity purposes, let's go ahead and let's add in a few more bars and move it to different areas inside of this timeline. The goal here is to show that we can create a quick high level timeline that we can represent to our team. And we can also easily demonstrate when certain things are occurring in parallel or in sequence. Now, if we click on insert, it'll automatically appear underneath a roadmap. And if we click on update, we'll see that the home page now has the timeline slash roadmap planner that we just created. And so we have the product status, including the latest updates, the Jira issues, anything that's recently been updated in terms of pages and a high level roadmap. Now let's focus on how your pages are organized and set up on the panel on the left hand side. This is where the magic happens. It's important to organize your information right here and you can also make child pages underneath each of your higher level pages. So to set up the hierarchy for the page in your product space, I recommend having the following categories as two high level macros. Let's add one page for meeting notes. And so we'll call it meeting notes. And then we'll click on publish. And then we'll add another page for project documents. And then we'll click on publish as well. Let's drag and drop the meeting notes template on top of the meeting notes page. And that will cause it to be a sub page as I'll show you right here. So right away, we have this arrow that can collapse and expand because it's now underneath this hierarchy. That way it organizes and it keeps all of your meeting notes under one location. And we'll do the same thing for our project documents page. Let's drag and drop the documents for product requirements and the decision documentation inside this header. And voila, now we have the meeting notes and the project documents as headers that contain our most important pages for our project. Let's also make a separate high level page for retrospectives. And we'll click on publish. Now that we've created a sample retrospective header page, let's go ahead and let's create a sample retrospective page that will be contained inside of this header page by using one of Confluence templates. So to do that, let's click on the plus button right here to create a page. And let's click on all templates so that we can access all of the templates that we can search or actually create a page from. And in the search bar, let's search for a retrospective. So right away, we have two sample retrospectives. We can choose this first one, which is a very basic retrospective. It contains start doing, stop doing, keep doing, and then action items. And then there's the four L's retrospective, where it talks about milestones, what's been loved, longed for, loathed, or learned, and then the following action and plan. For the purposes of our video, let's click on retrospective. 
let's title this page as retrospective comma followed by the date. And then we'll click on publish that's at the top right corner here. And voila, now our project space will have this retrospective newly created, but we need to insert this into our retrospectives header. What you'll also see is that Confluence automatically created a retrospective summary showing all the different retrospective pages that were created recently. So let's drag and drop this underneath the retrospectives page and let's title this retrospective summary. And so that way, if let's say you want a quick summary of all the retrospectives, this will be a good page to quickly go back and click on any retrospectives that you did previously with your team. Now our project space has been set up with three specific hierarchies. One for meeting notes, which you can then populate and add even more meeting minutes underneath this. You have another hierarchy set up for your retrospectives. It also even includes a summary for your retrospectives. And then you also have another category for your hierarchy for your project documents. So your product requirements and your decision documentation. Now what's great about your Confluence space is that you can change things around later and add other sections for your other items related to your project, such as your project plan, your charter, risk logs, or to capture information about specific procedures. It's all up to your discretion with how you want to manage your project and capture that information inside of Confluence. Now to help you succeed so you know how to use the most important features of Confluence, Please watch this video next to learn how to use Confluence from start to finish, and I'll see you in the next video.